Hey, what's up? It's Jared. I am a small business entrepreneur, a photographer, a digital marketer, and also a content creator. And I often get asked the question, how do you manage the different things that you work on and still actually get things done in each of those different aspects of your work life? And I wanted to talk about those things in this video titled, How to Get a Ton of Work Done. Of course, a ton of work means being productive. It doesn't necessarily mean working more hours. It means utilizing those hours to the best of your ability. I work on average about six to eight hours a day and that's very loose schedule. I don't want to miss out on any of my kids things. I want the ability to kind of get up and go whenever I want and so that flexibility means making sure that I have everything like set up so that I don't miss anything as far as tasks and work and stuff that I need to get done. I know when my deadlines are. I know if I'm flexible or not or if I have to just bare knuckle it and get a bunch of work done and uh, and of course what can I put off and so with that it means being organized and it means being structured so we're going to talk about how to get tons of work done and I'm going to talk about some of the things that I've done not all the time am I perfect at this I am a very flawed human being and so a lot of times I fail but as long as I am maintaining somewhat of this structure in my life I am able to be productive and of course all of this tilts around whether or not I'm doing well up here. And that can, of course, affect a lot of things as well. And maybe that's a topic for another video. The first thing that is super important before you can even be any level of productive is to get rid of distractions. That means closing your email app. And I know that that is stressful for a lot of people, but I have to schedule my check times to check email because otherwise that email will pop up and I feel like I need to respond to it right away. And the funny thing is, is that nobody else really responds right away. I mean, every now and then you get super fast responses from people and you're like, oh, that was cool. But most of the time you're not getting immediate responses. Having your email app opened all the time is just not going to work. And email applications that integrate calendar and a handful of other things, I feel are just making that harder because you have to, in order to see your calendar, get into your email application. So for me, I keep my calendar separate from my email. I do use an application called Spark, which I can get to my calendar from within, but I keep my calendar separate so I can look at my calendar without having to see my email. I also turn off notifications uh, on my computer and on my smartphones. I don't have any notifications coming up that are not super important. So of course, like text messages or phone calls, like I have those notifications because I want those notifications to come. I don't want to miss a phone call. I don't want to miss a text message. But there are times when I really want to uh, be super focused that I will go into like a do not disturb mode on my different devices, which means I'm only going to receive text messages and phone calls from people in my favorites list on my devices. So my wife, um, my kids, my parents, my in-laws, stuff like that, I will receive texts and phone calls from, but nobody else, it will all go to voicemail or the notifications won't pop up at all. So those are things that I have to do because those are things that can distract me. A five minute phone call can totally knock me off the wagon and I definitely don't want that happening. So also keep non-essential apps closed. Computers these days are so much more powerful and it's very easy to have multiple applications open. I know I am bad at this. I'll have so many Chrome tabs opened in my browser. I'll have several applications opened. And when I do that, it, things are there, things are I can jump between. When I have to go from one window to the next, that application is there and I may jump into it and then I go down a rabbit hole. So it's very important that you keep non-essential apps closed. So for me, a lot of times it's a browser window only, no multiple tabs unless it's required for the specific task that I'm working on and usually Notion so that I have my specific tasks, things uh, there so that I can continue working and notating when I need to. I try not to keep other things open. If I'm editing a video, I close everything else out because I want the performance of my computer 
computer for the video editing, and I also don't want the distractions that are gonna pop up and take me from editing a video to answering an email or whatever. Identify what's important by creating a project for each thing that you wanna complete. Now, I create projects for uh, client projects that I'm working on, but I also do that for myself, and I have several different ways that I do that. If it's a project, something that's ongoing, typically I will create a project for myself and whatever is required will be tasks underneath that project. I do the same thing for a client. If it's a uh, something that can be done in less than 30 minutes, I just use a task, I just enter it as a task. But if it's a bigger thing, I will put it as a project with tasks underneath it so I could chip away at it. But for me, I also need to create projects for individual things like this YouTube video. I create an entry for it and include everything that I need there, including my outline and any resources so that it's very easy for me to get on that project and actually get it done. I don't have to go looking for this and looking for that. Back in the day when I used to have everything kind of in their own places, it was very hard for me to get work done. Now that everything is in one spot, it's much easier for me to get that work accomplished and get it done. Set milestones for your projects. So if you have bigger projects, set milestones. These are like breakpoints, like a phase one, phase two, phase three, so that you have points in which that project is partially complete and not just a long list of tasks that may be halfway done or something like that. So bigger projects, definitely set milestones so that you have checkpoints. You remember old video games where you'd play a certain portion of the video game and then you'd get to that checkpoint. And if you died, you start back at that checkpoint. This is what I'm talking about here. If your productivity dies, you can start back off at that checkpoint and not feel like you have to go all the way back to the beginning and rebuild that momentum again. That's what you need to do here by building in some milestones. So those milestones may be complete a rough draft or uh, do the wireframe layout or something like that. You also need to set due dates for your projects. If you're like me, without a due date, there is no due date. And so I have to have a due date and I have to force myself to stick to those due dates. Even if there isn't anybody external from me forcing me, I need to stick to those due dates because otherwise I, I will look at that and say, well, I could do that later. And I'll put that off until later. And then later becomes never. And then I have a stack of projects or tasks that are un incomplete and it frustrates me. So I need to set due dates and have those things done by those due dates, which also means being smart that I don't overstack myself with too many things. So also break those projects down into tasks. And then of course those tasks fit within milestones if it's a bigger project. And having those tasks and chipping away at those and having a way to view the tasks that you've completed in that day is gonna give you a feel good at the end of the day and make you uh, recognize that there was accomplishment that day. And of course start the next day knowing that the day before you were on top of it and that perpetual motion is a real thing. So break those projects down into tasks. And then of course, there are bigger tasks that can be broken down into subtasks as well. So don't be afraid to kind of break things up. You don't wanna break things up into such small tasks that you're spending half of your time creating tasks and then checking them off, but you definitely want to break tasks up into specific things, depending on the way that you work, this could be different for everyone, but break a task up into a subtask if needed so that you can check those things off and complete. And then if you need to walk away from it, you can come back to it and know where you were. So for me, there is a happy medium to that, not getting too crazy with creating too many tasks. Sometimes I even forget to create tasks, but I like to have the project and the tasks underneath that so that I have some sort of structure there. The next step is to plan. You need to prioritize the things that you have created. So if you have projects, you need to plan when those are gonna be done, which is this, the due date that is scheduled. You also need to look at those tasks and prioritize them as well. I usually stack one or two more challenging tasks at the beginning of the day so that when I have most of my energy and mental capacity, I can knock those out and then throughout the day I have smaller tasks. And so my higher priority ones are bigger ones at the beginning of the day that I tackle first. First, and then later on throughout the day, after I've completed those tough tasks, I have smaller tasks that are a little bit easier. You also need to give your tasks due dates as well, because if you just have your project with a due date and you don't have tasks with due dates, then you may think, well, I've still got plenty of time because that project isn't due for a while, but then all of those tasks 
are going to take time and they need to be scheduled so that they don't all stack up and have to be done at the last minute, which typically means you're going to end up putting off that project altogether. So for your tasks, make sure that you have some sort of a due date for those as well. And then I also estimate the amount of time that each task is going to take to complete. Now, all of this is starting to sound like it takes a long time to set up. But in Notion, it's very easy for me to do all of this, just entering in a task, categorizing it, attaching it to the right project, uh, giving it a time frame, like a due date, and then the amount of time it takes to complete. It takes me very little time to enter all these things in. So when I create the project, I create the tasks, and I do that really quickly, and then it's set and I'm ready to go. But don't forget to also build in a buffer. A little bit of a buffer is gonna give you room for those situations where things didn't go according to plan. When you stack yourself too tightly and you don't have a buffer, if something does go wrong, you get really frustrated when that thing happens and it throws off the rest of your day. If you build in a little bit of a buffer, you already know how much time you have to spend kind of reorienting yourself or trying to figure out whatever that issue is. And if that buffer time runs out, you can automatically just push it off to the next day or add it in uh, to another task at a later time, or reschedule it per se. But building in that buffer gives you the understanding and the freedom to have a little bit of room just in case something goes awry, and a lot of times it does. The buffer is going to save you a lot of frustration. Now it's time to execute. Make sure that your plan is visible. Of course, a lot of times for me, I will have Notion in a, I have a very wide monitor, and so I'll have Notion up on the right corner of that monitor, and so I have my tasks there and any information that I need, and I'm working on the left, like two thirds of the monitor usually. And then if I'm on a smaller screen, like my laptop, I will use my iPad connected in sidecar, or maybe not even that, I'll just have the iPad up with Notion, and of course, I can see all of my stuff on that screen and then just utilize my laptop screen in a full screen mode so that I have less distractions. And the main part of execution is working on those tasks. As I mentioned before, start out with those uh, higher priority, tougher tasks early in the morning so that you get those things knocked out and the rest of the day is easier, more digestible tasks and it's just gonna make your day flow a lot better. It's easier to get into flow when you are super tied into an idea or a project at the beginning of the day and get some forward momentum. It feels good and it helps you get into that flow state where then through just the rest of the day you're knocking off tasks. Saving the harder things to the end of the day means you have less resources to actually achieve those things and it's going to be harder for you to have the brain power to get those things done. It'll be easier just to put them off or avoid them altogether. You don't want that. So execute those tasks and get them done. Don't miss my upcoming video on how to complete all of your tasks every day. You'll want to subscribe, like, and click that bell icon. I have another video coming up where I'm going to look more at that task completion process. I know that I went over more of the project uh, aspect of it and uh, just the mindset that you have to have in this video. And the uh, next video, I don't know if it's going to be the next video, it might be the one after that, I will talk more about how to get those tasks done. And so make sure to subscribe and like. I thank you so much for being here and watching this video today. If you have any thoughts or questions or comments, you know what to do down below, and I hope to see you back in the next one. Take care.